Sean Franklin from Blood and Iron Martial Arts, here with Richard Marsden from the Phoenix Society of Historical Swordsmanship, here to talk to you a little bit about historical Italian martial arts. Hi, so what we're looking at today is Fiore de Libieri. He was a um, guy who wrote around 1410, so his experiences would have been in the prior century. And Fiore's background is interesting in that uh, he was a weapons master, essentially. It wasn't just the sword, it was everything. He wanted to learn everything about weapons. And he said he became so good that he began picking up very, very influential clients. Fiore taught in secret, and he taught to an elite nobility. And his stuff probably remained a secret for quite some time because he wanted to have tactics and techniques that you know, nobody had seen before. He even said that when I taught a student, only the student was there, and then if some close relatives were there, they had to swear not to talk about it. So he took it very, very seriously. However, he said he was getting old and he wanted to be remembered, and so he created his Flower of Battle. Uh, uh, and it's a book a manuscript on vellum with actual gold and silver worked into it. It's very beautiful. There's four surviving copies right now. And he created a system and he wanted to make it easy to understand, which is great for us in the modern world. You know, he didn't want to be secretive anymore. So what we're going to be looking at is some of his techniques uh, and how they were to be used. Contextually, it was used generally in the barriers, which is a, a judicial duel, like if we had a, a beef with each other, we'd have these wooden uh, uh, walls around us and then we'd fight, probably not even to the death. But, he says, I was challenged five times against guys who wanted to, you know, hurt me, and he fought without armor, just wearing a, a jacket and gloves, and uh, uh, quitted himself fine. So his art is also for um, uh, Mortal Kombat. On top of that, when you look at the techniques themselves, you realize, like, oh, it's also self-defense and even a little bit of military skirmishing in here. So it's kind of neat in that his system kind of is a catch-all for almost any situation that you can encounter. He lived in a very dangerous world. Florence, for example, during this time period, had a murder rate that was twice as high as the most dangerous city in the United States. Yeah, very violent place. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, I know. So you had to know this stuff, right? You could honestly just be knifed. And he even shows a technique where a guy's seated and someone's trying to knife you and you only have your marshal's baton, which is a symbol of office you have to defend yourself. So again, it covers not just the judicial dueling uh, or the private dueling, uh, but self-defense as well. So we're gonna take a look at some of those techniques. It's uh, really neat. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at a selection of Fiori's techniques, starting off with Abrazari, which is a form of wrestling. Fiori has various guards that you get into. We're not gonna cover that today. What we're gonna look at is we've already ended up in a clinch, right, and what to do from there. And so the very first one that he shows is I use my left hand to check his arm. Now he's a bigger guy than me, and he can force me back through mass, but he actually can't use his arm, right? That arm's pretty, yeah, because I've jammed it. The other arm is over my shoulder. Right? How we got here, he doesn't say, so you got to figure that out on your own. Once you're here, the technique is as follows. Your hand places up here, you roll the shoulder, sorry, the elbow, over the shoulder, come up, come around. Now it's not a lock. You don't want to be like, I've got you, Sean, because Sean will then grab me. You need to just break it. That's the idea. Is we're trying to cause as much damage to the joint as possible. We're not trying to put someone in a, a submissive position. Fiori says there's two types of wrestling, wrestling for fun and pleasure, where you just kind of play around, and wrestling to like the pain and death. And that's kind of the one that he wants to teach. Which is only fun if you're winning. Yes, not so much if you're losing. Now, it's very easy to get out of this technique, and Fury's pretty clever because in the following play, he shows something that probably is a response to someone trying to get out. So here we are again. His arms are here, I've got him checked up here. I go to move his elbow. Well, he's smart enough to say, well, I don't want that, and he pulls his elbow back. The moment he pulls back, see how he is? he's back waiting now because he's trying to get out of that position? I come up to his jaw, I come down here, and I lift to throw him. He is a bigger guy, but one thing that's interesting about him, if I try to move his shoulders, it's really tough. But his head doesn't weigh much, so I can turn his head back, right? Even with a little resistance, go ahead. Because his head only weighs so much, right? So Fury's technique is, again, I go to, whoops, I go to roll it, he rolls his arm back, I see that backwards motion, I keep going, and down I go. And you'll continually do techniques in place. And what's neat about Fury is he actually says in the text, not all plays work all the time, keep trying. And that's really cool that he's kind of honest about like sometimes this stuff doesn't work. So keep it up, keep it up, keep it up. So that's the first one, wrestling. So what we're gonna look at now is the dagger section. Now Fiori's dagger is interesting, and this is a training one, is the dagger isn't like a modern knife. It's got a long blade. And the blade wasn't meant for cutting and slicing and slashing. People wore armor. In a duel, they might be wearing actual metal armor. 
on the streets, they tended to wear fabric armor of some sort to keep themselves protected. So what the dagger was used for, these things called rondelles, was you sort of use them like an ice pick. And the idea is you're gonna drive it into the opponent, yep, to get through that armor. This allows you to do some interesting counter techniques. Example, it's okay if I grab the blade. It's not a lightsaber, it's not sharp. The only thing I'm really afraid of is the tip. Now this one is rounded for safety. The real ones would have been nice, nice spike. So we're gonna show a couple of techniques with the dagger, and then later you're gonna see them again in the sword in one hand section, because Fiori's system is supposed to be used throughout, not just one, 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 but the whole thing, which is what makes it really neat. It makes it truly a system. So what he's gonna do here is he's gonna drive that blade into me. Go ahead. Oh no, and I'm in trouble, right? So my technique is I'm gonna stay left leg forward. I'm gonna use my left hand. I'm gonna intercept his. I'm gonna roll it as I pull my arm back. Go real slow. Right, and I'm using my forearm here to make the dagger turn upwards. From here, I can strike him, or I could try to strip the dagger out of his hand. Either one is fine. Done with a little speed. There you go. For the next technique, it's very similar to the first one. However, what have I missed? So he comes into strike, and my arm goes too far. There's nothing for me to catch. Now the good news is I'm past the dagger and I'm not going to get knifed. I pushed him out of the way. So I form what's called the, the, the middle bind. And I need to go in here, what Fury calls keys. I slip my arm over, I come around, and I pull up like this. I then begin to eat his elbow. Nom, 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 in order to twist him as much as possible. It has to have this bend. If you don't get the bend, you end up in a kind of a bad position where he comes, boom, now his arm's not bent. See that? It's not the end of the world, but oh no, right. So you really need it in there. I'm gonna twist my hips in order to get this. It's not supposed to be something gentle. Like again, all these things are meant to sort of break and dislocate, not just put someone in a nice lock. If they were there, you would try to strip the weapon out or again, start punching them. Fury shows counters, things you can do against it. So Sean's actually gonna counter me. I think I'm so clever, I'm gonna wrap his arm up, but he's gonna do something. Come up. Boop. I'm safe, cool, I come around, and then, uh oh grab your own arm. Ah, oh, there you go. He's gonna use his second arm. So even if um, I uh, uh, get it first, as long as he can put the second arm on, we're good to go. There we go. See, it locks him up pretty tight. That's one of the things that Fury talks about later throughout the dagger system, is if you can bring two hands to the guy's one, you tend to overpower him which can lead to some dangerous situations. Case in point, I go to stab him. He goes to do the lock. So you do the middle bind. Very good. I think I'm so clever, I go to grab it, but I take too much time, and then he grabs his own arm. Right? So you have to kind of be careful because both guys can do it, not just one of you. All right, so we looked at uh, wrestling and we looked at dagger, so now we're gonna look at the sword. And Fury's system is really neat because it shows not only dagger and wrestling and sword, he also shows spear and horseback and also a couple mixed weapons like dagger versus sword. So we're gonna look at sword in one hand and two. What we mean by that is using the sword in one hand or two and some of the techniques that come out of it. These are training ones. This one's from SGT Blades. This is an Ensifer blade on a custom hilt. Mm -hmm. And they what we use to kind of demonstrate our techniques and spar one another. So the first thing we're gonna show is sword in one hand. Sean here is in the first guard, the only guard for sword in one hand that we're gonna really worry about today. And what he's going to do is he's invited me to attack him, right, and I don't know any better. He's gonna move this front foot off the line, doesn't matter which direction. He's then going to parry. After that, he's gonna pass, and he's gonna demonstrate a technique we already saw in the dagger section, which is kind of the beauty of Fiori. You look like you're easy to get. Look familiar? Let's do that again. I throw the strike in. As he passes, he gets my wrist, just like he did in the dagger. If he misses it, he can do the middle bind, which again, we already saw. And there he goes, and he has my elbow, and it's all bent, and he's ready to eat it. If we turn around, See, right there like that. Oh, yeah, he's got me good. So once you do that, you have him locked up. And in this way, techniques taught in wrestling and in dagger show up in sword in one hand. So now we're gonna look at sword in two hands, being held with both, using the long sword in that sense. Now, Fiori has lots of guards, and we're not gonna spend a long time on guards. He has 
a woman's guard. He has a longa or a long point guard. We're gonna deal with that another day, maybe. What we are gonna look at is boar's tooth and the technique from boar's tooth. Fury spends a lot of ink on this particular guard and things you can do from it. So what is it? All right, I have a broad stance. My sword comes from my shoulder all the way over. I'm creating an invitation. I'm creating an invitation. We can see it from both sides. Creating an invitation, right? He's gonna throw that cut at me because I've asked him to. My front foot's gonna move off the line. Doesn't matter where, I like to kind of go this way. I'm gonna deflect with a false edge sideways, not up. I then pass. As I pass, I deliver the strike. Let's see that from the other side. Got my right leg forward, come up here. Nice good guard, he attacks. Very easy technique. Let's do it one more time, real slow. As he strikes, I step off the line. I parry up high. I already want to pass. I go ahead and pass and bring it down like so. And that's one of Fiori's deflections. Next thing we're gonna look at is spear. Now, one of the things I forgot to mention is that Fiori doesn't want you teaching this to the peasants. He's pretty explicit about this. So our peasant here doesn't get to have a weapon. He just gets to have a stick. I, who am noble, get to have a spear. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna show a couple techniques from the spear. Now what's interesting is those techniques have already been shown before, if you read the manual, in the longsword section. It's called an exchange of the point. I'm gonna exchange his thrust for mine. And then this tricky peasant's gonna counter me. All right, so we have the peasant here who's not paying his taxes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a nice broad stance. So I'm in one of Fiori's guards. I've created an opening, which should be kind of familiar if you guys are paying attention to the video. Like, oh yeah, he seems to invite it. As he thrusts, I better do something, right? He's gonna stab me, right? So I come in. What did I do there? My front foot moved off the line this direction as I deflected. Takes no effort at all, right? I'm deflecting a thrust. I then pass at an angle whoosh, into the throat. When you stab with a spear, it is possible to just sort of poke at each other, but Fury's techniques seem to show he wants a full pass, probably to drive through armor and really make sure it counts. Let's see that from the other side. Got a nice broad stance here, got my spear. Now I'm exaggerating it, let's do it a little faster. Easy peasy, right? And that leads us to the counter. There is a way for the peasant to actually not pay his taxes. I know, he's very excited. He's gonna use the butt strike. Let's see that from the other side. There I am, I think I'm all confident. Before I can get my tip back online, he's delivered the butt strike to me and I'm in trouble. And so that is some of Fiori's spear plays as well as the counter. Pay your taxes. No. All right, Richard, thank you very much for joining us. I'm sure our viewers have learned a lot. Yeah, I'm glad to show you guys a little bit about Fiori. I'd like to thank Tracy Mello, who's able to put together uh, this translation with pictures in a nice book format, and all the translators out there that are putting things together to make Fiori easier for us to understand. There's a lot more to the system that we showed you. We just gave you a quick sampling. Like there's really neat stuff like what to do when a peasant attacks you on the road and you have just your stick or some branches. What if you have to put some poison powder in someone's eyes? Next time you have to teach us that one. Poison powder. I'm Richard. I'm Sean.